fact, I don't expect this number. So uh, thank you very much to be here till this moment, and please stay, okay? This is one of my, even my oldest uh, presentation from about, eight, about 20 years now, but don't worry, it is now updated. This is the uh, cochlear implant. The cochlear implant is a multi-component device that provides the auditory information by direct stimulation of the auditory fibers in the cochlea. It is effective rehabilitation methods for profoundly hearing impaired patients who don't benefit from hearing aids. This is the component of the, of the cochlear implant. The external component, which is um, the microphone behind the ear, speech processor, which may be anywhere in the patient clothes, and the transmitter. And this is a removable part. We don't see the external component in imaging. They must be removed before imaging. And this is the internal non-removable run, run component which is implanted inside the patient, which is the receiver subcutaneously behind the ear. And this is a stimulator wire with its characteristic beads here. And this is the ground wire. The external components, the microphone, which here resides behind the ear, it receives the sound from the environment and transforms in, the sound into electrical impulses and sent to the speech processor. The speech processor is, is, is usually in the patient clothes and they encode the sound from only from, uh, from the frequency of human speech. The human ear can only detect sound from 20 to 20,000 20, hertz cycle per minute. The transmitter, which is this, this is the transmitter, just receive the magnetic impulses from the encoded magnetic impulses from that speech processor and send it to the surgical implanted subcutaneous receiver. And this is the whole system, how it works, the external which is here is the transmitter, here is the microphone, this must be removed before imaging, and this is the, what is implanted inside. This is the receiver, and this is the stimulator wire inside the cochlea and ground wire anywhere. So this is the, our radiological target, the receiver. The receiver is taking usually this shape. It is implanted subcutaneously within, behind the ear, and it converts the magnetic impulses received from the transmitter to electrical signal sent to stimulator wire. This is the stimulator wire. The stimulator wire placed inside the cochlea through the round window or through a dedicated ostium, the cochleostomy. It must be in the basal turn of the cochlea, but it may be in the middle turn. It is submillimeter in thickness, curvilinear in shape with a small bead, and each bead represents the individual electrode. And for, for proper hearing, at minimum of 12 beads, 12 electrodes must be inserted inside the cochlea. And this is the CT. This is simply the, the, co the cochlear implant entering through the round window and curls inside the cochlea in the basal turn. Here is the round window. So the preoperative radiological evaluation is the assessment of the number one, the eighth cranial nerve, the cochlea, and the pony labyrinth. We, see the, we, we assess the cochlea either the size, the morphology, or the cochlear length. The cochlear length could be measured directly with the, with, with the, with the multi-caliber or, or through a specific mathematical formula. Then uh, absolute contraindication, there is no nerve, no cochlea or no labyrinthine, or no the, uh, labyrinthine at uh, bony labyrinthine. This is the what is normal. This is how it looks normally the internal auditory canal. This is a porous acousticus or the medial opening of the internal auditory canal, and this divided by this horizontally horizontal division with the false form crest. The superior component is subdivided by the pills bar into anterior component and posterior component. Normally here is the facial nerve, the seven is up, seven up, and the lower here is the cochlea. And here in the posterior component, the superior and the inferior vestibular nerve. 
And please note that the cochlear nerve should be at least at the same size of the facial nerve. The cochlear nerve is, less than, is smaller than the facial nerve. This is the definition of the cochlear nerve hypoplasia. And please note that there is, there is, here is the fine adhesion. This is the, the meningeal adhesion between the superior and the inferior and the co vestibular and the cochlear nerve. These are a single nerve, the eighth cranial nerve. And when we use a three Tesla, we are going from above to downward. Here, there is a two parallel line that represent the facial nerve and the, and the superior vestibular nerve in the superior compartment of the canal. In the inferior compartment of the canal, we have two divergent lines. This is the cochlear nerve and this is the inferior vestibular nerve. And here is the axial and sagittal oblique. Seven is up, the cochlear nerve is upward, the, the facial nerve is upward, then the cochlear nerve is down. Here is the facial nerve and here is the cochlear nerve. That what, that we, what we got in the in cases of cochlear, vestibular cochlear nerve aplasia. This is a small size of the canal uh, containing a single nerve. This is a facial nerve with total vestibular cochlear nerve aplasia. This is normal and this is a, 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 a cranial nerve absence. Mondini, this will drag us to the, to the issue of the inner ear malformation. Mondini was actually one of the lucky researchers in the literature. Mondini just dissect a one eight, uh, the ear of one eight-year-old deaf boy, and he just described that there is absence of the apical modulus and the interscalar septum resulting in incomplete partition of the cochlea with enlarged vestibular aqueduct and dilated vestibule. This is according to the nowadays classification. It is incomplete partition type two with large vestibular aqueduct. But not everything is a Mondini. This is the differentiation between the normal cochlea, the Mondini, and a pseudo Mondini. The normally we have three turns, actually two and a half turns. This is the basal turn, and this is the middle turn, and this is the apical turn of the cochlea. We have a small indentation, bony indentation here, and small, small amount of bone here. This is the normal cochlea. In complete partition type 2, or what is described by Mondini, is that appearance. Just the intact basal turn with the apical turn and middle turn is now a single cavity. This is the Mondini malformation, or incomplete partition type 2. When there is no differentiation between the, the basal, middle, and apical turn, this is the pseudo-Mondini or incomplete partition type one, and usually this is a component of a, of a more cystic anomaly of the inner ear is a cystic coculo-vestibular anomaly or pseudo-Mondini or incomplete partition type one. Now, even after 20 years of its publication, we are still following the, the Dr. Sinar Ogolo classification published in, in 2002. Dr. Sinar Ogolo is not a radiologist. He's a one of the pioneer otologists in the, in the field of the cochlear implant. And he describes many entity in this uh, field, represents, I will go fast, a little bit fast in these uh, slides. This is the, the total labyrinthine anomaly or the Michels deformity, total absence of the labyrinth, of the entire labyrinth, and believe me, it is not so rare. This is I, or isolated absence of the cochlea. This is a cochlear aplasia, or a cystic common cavity, and he described a featureless common cavity represent the cochlea and vestibule with or without the presence of semicircular canal, and a cystic cochlear vestibular anomaly in complete partition type one or pseudomundini, call it the, uh, any of these terms, or what we, what, what we uh, he called that snowman shaped inner ear malformation. This is of normal size. Then semicircular either absence of one or the three semicircular canal, 
And, we, and finally, the large endolymphatic sac anomaly. The endolymphatic sac is measured at the isthmus, at, the mid, at its midway. It should not exceed a 1.5 millimeter, or it should not exceed the diameter of a nearby semicircular canal. And this is the charge syndrome, and I think Dr. my colleague, Dr. Alamia, is, uh, was talking about this entity yesterday. The charge syndrome, we are interested in the field of head and neck radiology by the charge syndrome. Actually, this is the updated diagnostic criteria, which include a 3C. All of them are present in the neck. Coloboma of the eye, quinal atresia, anomaly of the olfactory pathway and the characteristic ear anomaly which is semicircular canal dysplasia and aplasia and please if you found a patient with a severe and even bilateral semicircular canal dysplasia look for the other components of the charge syndrome in my experience not a very good percent of cases you cannot they are not fitting in a specific entity of the Sinar, Dr. Sinar Ogolo category. And this is my own concept in this malformation. Just imagine that the labyrinthine has a seven component, the cochlea, vestibule, semicircular canal, the vestibular aqueduct, and cochlear aqueduct, and any combination of these structures could be aplastic, hypoplastic or dysplastic it means a cystic dilatation should just describe what is absent what is small and what is cystic cystically dysplastic and please look for these seven components uh, now we will talk about the relative contraindication the 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 are woes a relative contraindication they are now a sort of a surgical difficulties Number one, the labyrinthine ossificans, which is the end reparative mechanism of any chronic irritative inner ear, just with ossification, with calcification or ossific density inside the cochlea and the vestibule. It may be bony or it may be even fibrous in early stages, which need MRI. This plastic cochlea, common cavity, cystic cochlear vestibular anomaly, large endolymphatic sac, they are all a relative contraindication or a surgical difficulties during operation. This is a pre-implantation CT finding that may complicate surgery. During introduction of the cochlear implant, they do a partial mastoidectomy, so we have to comment on the hypoplastic mastoid sinus, mastoid process, apparent facial nerve, the presence of otomastoiditis, the presence of otosclerosis, the hissing jugular bulb, apparent internal artery, or enlarged endolymphatic sac. And this is the autosclerosis, and this is Beethoven. Beethoven actually had an autosclerosis. Autosclerosis is autospongiotic bone, a dysplastic bone that fixes the oval window. It's a characteristic place either in the here, in the fistula antifenestratum, the anterior boundary of the, of the oval window, or in the pericochlear. This is the pericochlear autosclerosis. And actually, it needs experience, concentration, and you look for these tiny structures with this tiny demineralization. This is the fenestral autosclerosis, and this is the very cochlear autosclerosis. This radiolucences around the cochlea or demineralization of the peri of the otic capsule. The post-operative surgical evaluation is very easy just to do the stem review. The stem review is recalled from the history. Just tell the patient to put his cheek on the film and you get the stem review, the five degree uh, cephalic tilt of the X-ray, and this will irradiate the, uh, uh, the orbit. So simply, we use the modified stem view, which is actually the oblique PA view, with just a cephalic tilt of the X-ray just to 15 degree and just to avoid the direct, direct irradiation of the orbit. And that's what we get. This is the, this is the stem view. Here is the cochlea. Here is the stimulator wire and ground wire. A more close up here is the cochlea, the, the cochlear implant in place, and this is the stimulator wire. I, it may be difficult for you from this distance to see that here is the lucency of the superior semicircular canal and here is the lateral semicircular canal and this defined by the vertical line the expected site of cochleostomy. So at least 15 of the beads of the cochlear implant has to cross this line for proper uh, results. The post-operative complication, the most important, is the misplaced wire, either 
a wire penetrate away from the cochlea or broken wire or uh, penetrate out of the inner ear at all. Another complication is transient facial nerve paresis, imbalance, prelymphatic fistula, hardware failure, and skin uh, flap problem. And this is the stemver view or modified stemver view. This is cochlear in place, cochlear implant in place, and this is the cochlear implant out of place. And this is on CT, it is very easy, in and out, and it may be broken here. Actually, they are very, very rare to find this complication, a sort of misplaced wire or broken wire. In the post-operative setting, traditional cochlear implants are not considered safe for uh, 1.5 Tesla MRI, and not only for the, the magnetic field can dislodge the implant, but actually it can, this, the uh, embedded magnet cause a marked field distortion. But nowadays, MRI compatible is available. And this is the algorithm, the imaging recommendation, preoperative CT and MRI. We have to evaluate the inner ear structures, anatomical structures, the, the patency of the round window, identify any labyrinth in ossification, and in MRI, we have to evaluate the nerve and the, the membranous labyrinth, post-operative, the modified Stenver view, and if you need, the CT. Uh, best prognosis of the cochlear implant occur in the post-lingual deaf. Post-lingual deaf means that a child had already lost his uh, hearing after he learned to speak. This is a post-deaf lingual and this is the best result. The deaf-mute child, that means that the child had no enough hearing even to learn to speak. And this is the bad prognosis, that prognosis for the cochlear implant. And the prognosis depends on the number of the intracochlear beads or electrodes that succeeded to enter the cochlea, and at least 15 are required. In post-operative patient, and for conclusion, in post-operative patient, uh, uh, we have, to, uh, we have to, uh, to answer if there is any contraindication of the cochlear implant uh, placement, are there any findings that may complicate surgery, and which side will be easier for the surgeon? In post-operative setting, how far is the cochlear implant is in appropriate location? And finally, for those children which don't have even a cochlear implant, there is another device which calls the auditory brain stem implant. This device is directly stimulate the auditory pathway inside the bones. So this is the, have the same structure as the receiver and these two wires, the stimulator wire end in a paddle, not a, not a something. In some ending in a battle, not in a curial shape, and another uh, electrode wire. And this is a, what is that? This is.